doing such a wonderful event at the University of Kine. Um, just, I wanted to say just a few words about um, my, uh, the topic of my research and also my aims of research in English and in Russian. Um, so uh, by focusing on informal payments at school and universities, of course I do not mean to stress negative aspects of Kazakhstan society which I really respect and I'm pleased for many years and I come back every, almost every year. My aim here is to analyze how um, people's strategy to solve everyday problems in informal ways have changed after the introduction of market principles. Um, my aim is not to give any ethical uh, judgments, it is good or not. Вообще это не вещи говорить по-русски, чем по-английски, потому что я практически больше. Но так как я написала доклад на английском, мне вот это сложно перевести с английского на русский, поэтому сначала хочу коротко объяснить, вот почему я выбрала такую тему и вот какая у меня задача. Но я выбрала эту тему не для того, чтобы подтолкнуть негативные моменты, а, и, и осуждать учителей или директоров школы, конечно, нет. А моя задача это понять и анализировать, как изменился советский блат а, после перехода к рыночной экономике и как вот, неформальное решение вопросов при капитализме сейчас отличается от решения вопросов при социализме. Ну, если вкратце вот так найти. Так, uh, so, uh, Down, down. Okay, um, so uh, Kazakhstan uh, has placed a uh, high emphasis on the education of its young generation and all of us know that the Kazakhstan's, Kazakhstani government spends lots of money for uh, education, for instance, Olashak scholarship and also the establishment in of Nazarbayev University in Astana. Uh, one, while we acknowledge that this investment in cultivating, uh, Kazakhstan's investment in cultivating future leaders undoubtedly uh, has achieved positive results. The integrity of the whole education system in, is uh, actually at risk. And according to the survey results of Sanj Research Center, a private think tank in Astana, as many as 40% of uh, students and possibly their parents um, respond is that they use bribes to gain state-sponsored scholarships, to pass end-of-term exams, or to change into a different major. And for public schools, 19% of those interviewed stated that they paid cash to obtain admission to a school, to a certain school, or to receive good grades at graduation for their child, or for, uh, to be employed at school. And this fact and reality is acknowledged officially openly by high-ranking high -ranking officials and also politicians. Oops. Ah, okay. So, uh, getting things done uh, through informal channels to circumvent official procedures is a custom from Soviet times, as Lidinova and other scholars have studied. Uh, given that money did not have intrinsic value in the socialist economy due to widespread shortages, building a reciprocal relationship through mutual, non-monetary exchange of favors or blood was a key survival strategy for ordinary people. After the introduction of market principles, personalized transactions increasingly came to involve money. And the practice of giving cash for favors has become commonplace in almost every sphere of life. And for ordinary citizens, institutions of education and healthcare services are perhaps one of the most familiar places where uh, the significant growth of cash payments poses an acute problem. Like, I also quote uh, Dina's dissertation, wonderful PhD thesis in my paper. I, I learned a lot from her paper. So uh, it is not surprising that informal payments uh, in education and health 
services healthcare sectors uh, in post social services have attracted much scholarly attention. And by focusing on the manner in which personal transactions occurred and in the subjective perceptions of participants of such practices, anthropological analysis have shown that the boundary between bribes and uh, rights and gifts are in fact quite blurred. And also informal transactions often have a fluid and hybrid character. That means that the attitudes and manners uh, often frame these payments as having characteristics of both a gift and a bribe. And um, this um, uh, more recent novel in 2014, for example, uh, taking, uh, takes uh, informal payments in the state health and education sectors in Russia and Ukraine. Uh, they emphasize the importance of personhood to the system of cash payments. And I would summarize that this, uh, these, uh, uh, their arguments in two aspects as shown in the slide. So number one, the di they, these studies concentrated on dyadic relationship between the giver and taker. And secondly, they uh, uh, argue that insufficient salaries caused by deep cuts in public spending uh, the reasons for the prevalence of primary. So uh, the, uh, the teachers and uh, doctors are underpaid, so that's why they have to uh, survive and they have to take money from patients and students. And my aim of uh, research is that uh, to add something new to these perspectives, uh, that is, I would, I'd like to focus on the power structure in which cash is collected and rents are distributed in a systematic, organized manner. I would argue that um, participants of informal exchange in educational institutions include not only students and teachers, but also individuals who had administrative positions and education officials. And the second point I want to uh, uh, stress uh, is that the high informal costs required to obtain a teaching position serve as an incentive for accepting various payments from students and their parents. So previous studies mostly focused on the uh, low salary of uh, workers in the state sector, and I uh, acknowledge that this is true, but also I want to emphasize that in addition to Low uh, salaries, we have to think about the high informal cost to be a teacher or to be a um, director of a school. So I think I can skip methodology section. So, as many of you do, I did uh, qualitative research and I took formal interviews, informal conversations, and ethnographic observations. So, uh, uh, I, in my paper, I give some concrete examples how informal payments are made, in what situations, but uh, I, I believe that such things are quite familiar, you are quite familiar with, perhaps many of you know much better than I do. Uh, so, I skip these details and just want to summarize my findings. So, at school, uh, informal payments are paid for admission to a particular school, not necessarily prestigious, prestigious school, but uh, school in your neighborhood. Sometimes you cannot send your child to a school in your neighborhood because it's well too much occupied or some for some other reasons. So sometimes parents have to pay two hundred, three hundred dollars or even more to just to send her uh, her child to a school in her neighborhood. And also inflating grades and passing graduation examinations, and also uh, to get successful results of unified national testing or in there. Uh, one woman uh, in her 40s even told, shared me with a uh, story that the director of a school uh, invited all parents and then uh, support, uh, um, they suggested to pay a certain amount of money and then the, the director says they can give him answers in that words. And then what is surprising here is that none of the parents objected or even doubted and they were very glad to pay you know, money to school. And um, uh, what I want to um, uh, emphasize here 
is that these payments are made not in private manner or in high, but rather collected in systematic, systemic manner. And uh, in many cases, public school uh, principals play a central role uh, in informal exchange between schools and parents. And also, uh, sometimes education officials tacitly permit or even actively participate in such exchange. Um, so I, just a few words about uh, informal payments and institutions of higher education. Uh, there are various patterns of buying grades and thesis, for instance. Uh, you can pay through a uh, fixer or starasta, uh, or uh, you can pay individually, and in jury, I just write uh, the individual purchasing of grades from a teacher. And also, these is uh, available uh, at market. You can open newspaper, and then you can find ads, and you can buy thesis, or or internet, or sometimes uh, you can buy uh, thesis, ready thesis from a teacher or a teaching assistant. And uh, I I don't go into detail, details because many of you heard about these examples. Um, so. Um, now, um, there is a very interesting uh, work by uh, Swedish scholar uh, Johan Engel. Uh, he argues that uh, public schools are sold in Kyrgyzstan, uh, not only in Kyrgyzstan, but in many post-communist states. Communist states, public posts are widely perceived as sold for money. And, um, It's apparent to everyone that the informal income uh, that one can generate by holding a public office over a certain period of time can be used to pay off the in initial expenses or investment on buying that post. In other words, uh, Engel argues that informal payments and other rents associated with these positions are collected as a return on investment for the initial down payment on securing public Position. And such income must be shared with key colleagues, and the portion is also passed up to the superiors. And I argue that uh, this mechanism of selling and buying public posts and the flow of informal payments uh, both generally hold true to educational institutions. Although previous studies on the educational sector mostly focused on a dyadic uh, exchange between the teacher and the students, but I would argue that, that this mechanism of selling and buying Posts and the flow of uh, money can uh, this this scheme can be applied to analytically can be applied to uh, the education sector. So um, there is a pyramid-like structure in the education sector in Kazakhstan and also in other states of form uh, uh, in other former socialist states. And a teacher and uh, um, teacher and principal positions are considered uh, as being available for payments. And in this pyramid, uh, cash both from parents and teachers is collected and distributed, distributed and passed upward in a systematic manner. And, uh, and the exchange of uh, sorry, I just no, 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 no. so the exchange of informal payment for favored school is not an act of individuals, but rather an organized act permitted or actively participated by the management of school, educational institutions, and sometimes even by local administration. And there is a much talk about the buying and selling of the post at school, and some parents and teachers themselves deplore that the quality of education is falling uh, because those who are neither capable nor willing to teach pupil, pupils can become teachers by paying just for the post. 
And compared with the widespread uh, belief that public positions are purchasable at institution, primary and secondary education, uh, little information is available as to the saving of teaching positions at uh, institution of higher education. Uh, here, one possible examination explanation may be that any professorship requires a deep knowledge in a specific field which constrains the illicit sale of those, these positions. On the other hand, the formal and informal costs required uh, in order to acquire the necessary degree to be a university teacher are higher than uh, for school teachers. For example, paying official uh, monetary rewards for teachers involving the examination process and holding extensive banquet after thesis uh, defense. Or just a uh, doctor's thesis sells for a much higher price than bachelor's thesis. And I would argue that these informal, uh, these, these financial strains on graduate students may affect on their future behavior in two ways. First, um, those who have made informal, uh, often illicit investments in a research position or professorship would be motivated to collect returns in the form of informal payments from students in the future. And second, a future university teachers may internalize the idea that degrees can be obtained for cash and consider that the use of money as natural and normal practices, which is no less harmful. Um, to conclude, uh, I, have shown, I have tried to show that the informal or illicit payments in educational institutions are not simply endemic, but also systemic uh, practices in which uh, various actors participate according to certain rules. At many schools and universities, grades, examination scores, admission, and academic degrees are traded as commodities and traded for cash. Treated as commodities and traded for cash. And needless to say, um, not all teachers or students in Kazakhstan participate in illicit monetary transactions. Of course not. However, large numbers of young people witness the use of informal payments at various occasions, um, starting in childhood. And many of them learn the skills through real world practice before they get out of school. So the prevalence of informal payments in the sphere of education is a reflection of the society at large in which the market ethos places monetary value on all kinds of exchanges and relationships. At the same time, perhaps the most serious effect of the marketization of schools and universities is that it has implanted into the young generation the idea that everything can be and should be or resolved or can be resolved or, or, or accomplished faster, more effectively by paying money. Thank you very much.